At the end of my first recording, I believe I made a comment that later on I would evaluate a series involving reciprocal fourth powers of odd numbers. This is where I will do that. I'm going to look at the following series. It's the sum of all the reciprocals of fourth powers of the odd numbers, with no alternating sign this time, so all pluses between. There may be other ways to do this, but the method I'm going to use is to utilize Parseval's theorem. We'd better, to begin with, briefly discuss what Parseval's theorem actually says. Let's take f of t to have its usual form for the Fourier series. That's a half a0 plus a sum involving the cosine and sine terms with coefficients a n and b n. I've taken the period to be capital T here. The coefficients a and b would be calculated in the usual way. Then Parseval's theorem gives the following result. It says that we can integrate the function f of t squared over a whole period and with a coefficient at the front in which we divide by the period and the result will be the following. Notice the right hand side involves just squares of the Fourier coefficients. There are no sines and cosines there. What has happened is that improving that result we have actually done integrals over t involving the squares of the sines and cosines and those have integrated away to give constant values. Anyway, my intention here is not to prove the theorem, but just to make use of it. To prove the sum formula that I mentioned at the beginning, I need to have an actual Fourier series for a function. The function I'm going to choose here is just f of t equals t between the values of t equals 0 to 2. And I'm going to take its half range cosine series. Let's draw a graph first. Here's the basic unit, and then to get a half-range cosine series we need to extend it so that it has period 4 and becomes an even function. So it'll look like this. In calculating the Fourier series for this function we can be confident that all the b's will be 0. There will be only a0 and a n's and hence only cosine terms. I'm going to write down that series now. Here it is. Now remember Parseval's theorem involves the squares of the Fourier coefficients a0 squared, a n squared, b n squared and so on. We'd better identify what those coefficients are. Look at the first term in the series 1. Remember that that is a0 over 2. So a0 itself must be 2. Furthermore we can write down the b's very quickly. They're all 0. Finally, the an's are just the coefficients in front of the cos in the sum, including the factor of 8 over pi squared. But notice that we only get a's with an odd label, 2 and minus 1. The a's with even label are all 0, just like the b's. OK, so there's our basic material. Let's go back and look at Parseval's theorem for a moment. I've circled it in red. On the right hand side we've got to evaluate a quarter a0 squared and then the sum of all the a n squareds and b n squareds with a half in the front. On the left hand side we've got to do an integral involving the square of f of t from 0 to t. Let's address that integral next. It's the integral over a whole period. Annoyingly the function f of t the basic unit changes its form as we move across the period. So from 0 to 2 f of t is t, but from 2 to 4 it's something different that in principle we might have to work out. However, because we've got an even function here, we can step around that problem by instead integrating over half the period but doubling the value of the integral. So in fact we can do the integral of t squared from 0 to 2 and divided by the period which is 4. I've written out the details here. We start with the left hand side of Parseval's theorem. We set t equal to its value which is 4. Then we halve the integration range to make it 0 to 2 instead of 0 to 4 but double the value 
by putting the 2 outside. Once we've done that, then we're entitled to replace f of t with t, so we get the integral of t squared. Doing that integral yields the value 4 thirds. So 4 thirds will appear on the left-hand side of our statement of Parseval's theorem. Now what about the right-hand side? Here it is again. We need a quarter a0 squared plus a half the sum of the squares of all the a's and b's other than a0. So there's the four thirds on the left and remember a0 was 2 and we need a quarter a0 squared so that's a quarter times 4 and then a half the sum of the squares of all the a's and b's but the bn's were all 0 and the only a's are the odd ones. I'll write those in now. Remember we've got to square them though. OK, that's all of it. Let's do some algebra and see what it tells us. To start with, the quarter times 2 squared is 1 and we can subtract that 1 from both sides which will give us 1 third on the left. There it is. And having made a big thing about remarking that I should square the coefficients, I forgot to put the square on, so I've now just added that on that black bracket above to the right. So now let's start to simplify that term. 8 squared is 64. So 64 divided by the 2 that's out the front makes 32. And there'll also be a pi to the fourth. What's left in the sum is then the fourth powers of the reciprocals of the odd numbers. We can now rearrange this formula and we'll have a value for that sum. I hope you can see that the value comes to pi to the power 4 divided by 96. I'll conclude there.